Our first stop of note, the Safara Lodge, adjacent to one of the many game parks of the country. Looks like, as with many quality resort hotels, they have their doorman here, dressed up in all his finery. This turned out also to be our introduction to the traditional accommodation of the African continent, the Roundeval, the hut with no corners for bad spirits to hide out in. We were really amazed at the quality, actually near luxury, we found in these huts. Of course, there were some rules and regulations that had to be followed. I'm willing to follow this rule. Who knows what carnivore one may come up on out there. I mean to that, brother. But the Safara Lodge had its own game refuge, and upon rising early, I found these elands just up the hill from our rendezvous. To my surprise, they completely ignored my presence, continued their feeding. Being a brave soul, mm -hmm. I ignored the warning sign on the fence and crawled outside for a closer look. After breakfast, we are off to one of the three major game reserves we are to visit during our trip here. This one is called, uh... Shushuwe. Shushuwe? Shushuwe? Shushuwe. Anyhow, it is in the central Zululand area, about 182 miles north of Durban, covering 57,000 acres. Any elephants here? Not, Not yet. We find those at Kruger National Park. It goes without saying... But he's going to say it anyhow. ...that it is in the game reserves that we will find most of the game. That's what I call a profound observation. Well, there it is, in all its glory. Zebra is one of the animals you will find in proficient numbers throughout the preserves. Well, thank you not to refer to me as it. One animal we were to see quite often was a Nyala. Something to be sure I hadn't ever heard of up to now. Now Nyala, which is a Zulu name for the animal, are mainly browsers and keep to well wooded areas. The ram, at a height of 40 to 42 inches and weighing 150 to 300 pounds, is deep chested and dark brown with vertical white stripes on the body. Here is a mixture if you ever saw one. The long face of a moose horns of a cow, beard of a goat, and the mane and tail of a horse, it all adds up to a blue wildebeest. I wouldn't care to have one of those over 500 pound monsters after me. How about a whole herd on the stampede? No thanks. Now here is an animal that all the movies and books have chasing after jeeps and trucks and what have you. How about opals? It is good enough for there too, even better, I think. The white or square-lipped rhinoceros is a grazer, and its wide muzzle and straight lips are well suited to the purpose. An official in 1920 put the total count of these animals in the Natal province at 20. Strict measures by the Natal Parks Board not only saved the species from an extinction, but has enabled them to breed in such numbers that they are now being exported to zoos throughout the world and to game reserves in other areas where they had become extinct. All very nice, but I was promised some elephant. Not at the Shui. You weren't. Just keep your horns on, you'll see more elephants than you bargained for. All right, you two. Anyhow, we are away from Shushui and heading northeast through more of that extensive farm country. While much of South Africa's land is under modern industrial agriculture, there is still much that is home-owned by the Zulu individual farmer. Well now, 
auction powered. At least this one doesn't have to worry about the cost of gas. Like home in the United States, there are the roadside stands showing the bounty of the exotic fruits grown here. What is that you have there, Etty? These are pawpaws. What? Pawpaws. You know pawpaws? Looks like a papaya to me. Well, yeah, we call them pawpaws. That's true. Like what we call at home called corn, it's called maize elsewhere. Our papayas are their pawpaws. No, it doesn't go pow when you bite into it. Hey now, give me some wings and I'll fly. Some rather vertical country here at Nelshugti Pass as we pass on our way to probably the world's most famous national park. Coming down into the valley near Barbaton, we are reminded of what we would call backward seasons. For the month is October, and here the season is spring, as evidenced by these beautiful jacaranda blossoms. An overnight stop at White River found us at what many would think of as just an American institution, but is found the world over the roadside motel. While the Bougainvillea is a native of southern U.S. and tropical America, its profusion in this part of the South Africa is quite startling. And a close-up reveals its beautiful color and texture. <laughs> 